Hello everyone and welcome to National Intern Week with IBM. I'm Suki, I'll be your host for this presentation on behalf of CareerMap and today I'm so pleased to welcome Liam and Ryan from IBM for this session where you get a chance to learn more about these university opportunities at IBM. As we go through the session, please feel free to use the chat box. And if you have any questions, please send them across and we'll try to answer them during the Q&A at the end. With that, I'm now going to hand over to Liam to get us started. Thank you very much, Suki. Cool. Well, hi there. Nice to meet you all. My name is, uh, my name is Liam. I'm going to take you through um, a little presentation slide. Um, I appreciate there's going to be a lot of information on these slides. Um, but like, like Suki said at the start, if you can, any questions at all, feel free to put them in the chat um, and we'll take them through you at the end. Um, the reason why I say that is because we might actually cover some of your questions throughout the presentation. Um, but there's, there's no harm in asking any questions. We'll try and address as many as possible um, towards the end. So if we just go to the, to the next slide, I'll do a bit of an introduction. So like I say, my name is Liam Waugh. Um, feel free to link up with me on LinkedIn if you want to, if you have any questions at all. Um, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Um, and there's just a little agenda for the presentation as well. So I'm going to take you a little bit of a welcome and why IBM. So to give you some information about um, what we do as a company, um, what kind of roles we might have available um, for yourselves to apply to for the university placement schemes that we've got and a little bit about the career opportunities as well. I think uh, a very good reason why we, we ask people to apply and our, and our schemes are so good is that we have an intern uh, and university placement scheme which then also fuels our graduate scheme as well. So I'll talk a little bit more of those in detail um, and then I'm lucky enough to have uh, a colleague of mine called Ryan. So Ryan is, uh, is our intern this year um, in our talent acquisition team, who is going to speak a little bit about himself, his journey, um, and why he applied for IBM as well. So he'll have some time during this call as well. And then, like I say, we're going to have a Q&A session at the end. Um, we've got at, at least 15 minutes allocated to that. Um, however, from previous uh, sessions that we do, we do know that we get quite a few questions. So we may make that a little bit more time allocated to that, depending on how much we cover at the moment. Okay, so... So, um, so a little bit about myself is that I'm a talent acquisition partner for the UK. Um, so I specifically looked after um, software development roles. Um, that would be the university placement scheme that we do, uh, the graduate scheme that we do. And then we also have a 12 week um, internship called Extreme Blue, which I also look after. Um, I am in a team of other talent acquisition partners who look after different um, areas as well. So schemes that I talk about, I'll work with some of those people who are um, who look after those schemes. Um, cool. So if we want to move to the next slide, I'll, uh, I'll start talking about what we're going to talk about in terms of IBM as well. So by the end of this session, hopefully we'll be given an understanding of what IBM does as work and the impact that we have on the world with our work. Um, we'll take a little peek into uh, to Ryan's life as an IBMer and, and how, what he gets up to. Um, we're going to talk to you a little bit more about the opportunities, some good points as well about the opportunities, not just necessarily, you know, what, when they open and when you can apply for them, but what each one kind of entails um, and what you kind of get out of them as well. Uh, we'll also have a little section on some of the information as to how you actually do apply with us. Um, there's ways in which you can register your interest because not all of the roles open at the same time. Um, and you, you, by registering your interest, you can then get notified when those opportunities go live. Okay. And then we'll try and answer as many questions as possible uh, towards the end. So if we go to the next slide, I'll talk a little bit about what it's like to be an IBM. So we we have these three pillars, which we kind of make reference to a lot in our, in our working lives. So that's possibility, curiosity, uh, and individuality. Um, so a lot of the people who join, we, they tend to resonate with these values. Um, I'm going to go through each individual one um, and see which ones kind of resonate with you um, and which ones um, maybe you might want to work on a little bit more. But it's really, really good as well that you can be able to talk about these three different things and how it relates to the work that IBM does. Um, so if we go to the next slide, I'll talk about possibility and what that means. OK, so. When we talk about possibility at IBM, we're talking about the limitless ways uh, you can do meaningful work here. So um, work that matters, work that makes an impact on the world, uh, and work that is of service to others in the world as well. 
Um, so at IBM, we focus on not just serving our customers, but also on serving our communities as well. Um, so we kind of look at the bigger picture. We've got work that we do for clients, but what we do for those clients, what can we also do that impacts other people at the same time? Um, it's so such a big company that I think the reason why so many people stay with IBM is because of the, nobody says no, if that makes sense. Um, you probably think, well, I mean, someone must say no to something, but I think if they're, if you show the willingness to learn, the willingness to try new things, um, it's very, very rare that someone will stop you in those kind of adventures. Um, take myself, for example. So I started as an intern. I was told that there was no way um, back for an intern to come back into HR. So I work in HR. It's a very, um, very small team. But they, um, they don't usually have a graduate scheme. Um, but surprise, surprise, I'm here. <laughs> they must have um, seen something in me and tried to make a little bit of a detour to try and get me back. So I think that just kind of screams volumes that if you want something enough and you show the willingness to to give people a reason why you should be doing something, I think it's very much possible in this company. Um, and I liked that a lot I, when I when I applied back. Um, I liked the fact that people would give you that support to, to, to try and, and do as much as possible. So possibility is a is a very big thing that we look at. Um, and it's something that is, is something you should kind of include if you can in, in any application that you do with us. Um, so if I, if we move on to the next slide, I'll talk a little bit about the technologies as well that we work with. So we actually had a birthday, um, I say we, not myself. Otherwise, if I said I'm also this old, you'd probably be thinking, what, what does he do to keep that young? Um, so our company is 111 years old at the moment. So it's been around for a very, very long time. And um, appreciate a lot of the technologies that we've been involved with and the things that we've done have changed over those years. So I think uh, when I first started, I went on a bit of a tour in one of our in one of our campuses. Um, and it's like a museum of all the different things that we used to do at the very beginning. And I think if I'm not sure if many of you know, but the very first thing IBM did was me, uh, make cheese and meat slices. So um, you're probably thinking, wow, I probably don't make them anymore because they're probably a bit outdated. And I don't think I've ever used a meat or cheese slicer. So, um, so that was something that we did very, very early on in our, in our lifetime. Um, but now we do, we touch on many, many different technologies, which affect loads of different people in the world. So the first one I'll talk about is artificial intelligence. Um, so we've got IBM Watson, uh, which helps industries think smarter, act faster and accomplish a lot, lot more um, than what they previously were doing. And it's, it's designed to leverage machine learning and massive data analysis um, to augment human intelligence. Um, and amplify its reach as much as possible. So we, we specialize in ANA quite a lot. Um, we also specialize in cloud technology because um, we appreciate a lot of things are moving to cloud um, at the moment. So uh, we provide the most advanced infrastructure to help our clients succeed. Um, we gain access to a full stack cloud platform with over 170 products and services in five cloud environments um, and building deep expertise across 20 different industries. So our, our cloud strategy is, is something that we're pushing quite a lot at the moment. Um, and it's definitely at the forefront of our, of our business. We also delve into our IBM blockchain technology, um, which helps us drive trust, transparency across different networks by creating a fast and secure way for businesses to share their data. Um, so our blockchain technology was ranked number one um, against analyst firms, Juniper Research and Everest Group, which is quite good. Um, it's, it's a, it, when I first joined IBM, IBM blockchain was very much in the kind of infancy stage, um, but it's come on leaps and bounds, um, and really helped a lot of companies, uh, share their data and, and share their data securely as well. Um, quantum is another big thing as well. And I know these are big, big, big phrases that not many people knew. I know, especially from a HR background, I had to do a lot of research on these different technologies to understand them, but, um, quantum computing is something that we are you know, trying to be the leaders at, at the moment. It's such a interesting and vastly complex technology. Um, but there are challenges today, which, which computers just can't solve because they're such huge problems. Um, but quantum computing is a way in which we can actually harness so much power to actually do breakthroughs in these problems. Um, our phrase is that our, our quantum technology can solve the unsolvable. Um, and our quantum computer is called IBM Q. And it's currently the most advanced quantum computer that there is on the market. Um, I don't believe 
we actually sell to clients yet. And I don't think anybody sells to clients yet, but that's the way in which we're trying to go is to try and harness that kind of power to bring it to our clients so that they can solve the unsolvable. Um, and then the last one I'll touch on is IBM Consulting. This has grown so much since I've joined um, the company and it's it's something which is being pushed more and more to. And a lot of our graduate schemes you'll see is, is revolved around IBM Consulting because it's that way of bringing in fresh talent with those fresh pair of eyes to try and see things in a different way. Um, but our consulting department is basically all about how we can harness those technology and bring them to our clients, helping them with the very best that they need in order to be successful. So um, as you can tell, we cover a, a lot of different things. So links with that idea of possibility that, you know, if there's something that you want to tap into at IBM, you know, definitely try and pursue it because no one's going to put you um, to, to stop you from doing that. So if you move to the next slide, I'll talk about curiosity. Um, very much links. You'll see that these three these three pillars kind of link together. Um, but curiosity uh, is all about what we we like to see in your kind of like working, for example. So um, at IBM, growing our skills and helping others to grow is part of everything that we do. Um, we're always excited about continuously learning, sharing expertise, uh, and giving and receiving feedback is big as well. Um, a lot of uh, early professionals who who enter the business, we tell them, you know, everything you, you can do, if you can ask for feedback on it, um, it's always a great way to learn, learn about what you're doing really, really well, because obviously that's something that you want to continue doing in the future. Um, and then things that you can improve on, because we're always saying that we can always continuously improve. There's, there must be ways we can always do our job better. Um, but we also don't expect you to be an expert as well. I think that's something which comes with curiosity. Um, especially when you start something new. We do expect that you'll, you know, be excited to learn and grow, but also, you know, don't worry about not knowing everything. I think you'll you'll have enough time to to find out about different things to learn as you go along. Because um, at the end of the day, everyone has to start somewhere, don't they? So, um, so yeah, so if we'll move on to the next slide, I'll talk a little bit about what IBM currently does to kind of help people to to have access to that sort of learning and push people to have those opportunities. So we've got a platform called Your Learning, which is a pretty impressive tool considering how much it's in there. It's, it's constantly being updated, but um, you can literally at the, at the touch of you know your laptop, you can be like, oh, I want to learn a bit about, you know, Liam talked about quantum. What, what is that? What, what can I learn about that? You can actually search for different um, learning bundles about quantum um, some can last as much as half an hour like on a video others can be a lot more in depth where you actually get certification after it as well so you can get a, a badge which says you know such and such is is qualified has completed the quantum conversations learning badge um, and you can share that on things like linkedin it's, it's recognized on linkedin um, and who doesn't love a, a little badge that says that you've done some piece of learning we've got so many different badges that you can do um, which is really, really good platform to make fun of. Um, so we also have your career at IBM as well, which is a, similar to your learning. It's a, it's a bit more about where do you want your career to go? Um, you might be in a certain role, you've been there for a couple of years, you want to see what else is out there. Um, and your career allows you to tick a box and it'll say whether you want to be open to other opportunities. And we have a platform which looks at things that you've been learning and things that you've been doing um, and suggests different roles to you that you could try. Um, I actually moved into this role in February of this year because of your career. I said I was in a, a different area of HR for about two and a half years. And I thought, you know, I feel like I know quite a lot. I'm doing quite a lot in this role, which is the same. Nothing's really new anymore. Um, I'd be open for a change. And then this role was suggested to me. Luckily, I knew uh, the manager of the team as well. I was quite good. Um, I was a quite a good network with them. Had a good conversation with them about the role, um, and I made the swap. So it's, it's as easy as that. As to if you want to change in IBM, that's why it's so good to stay with the company because you could have multiple careers under the same company. Um, your guides is another one, is that which we have as well. Um, your guides is all about how you can connect and experience with IBMers as well. So we've got things like mentors and coaches. Um, it's like eBay for mentors. You, if someone could list themselves as a mentor, say I specialize in this, this and this, someone else could go onto the to the eBay of, uh, of mentors and say, I'm looking for someone to help me learn this. And the two compare you up and you, and you can have conversations with someone you don't even know. Um, 
but learn about something that you both share as an interest, which is really, really good. Digital badges as well that I've mentioned, that links with your learning. There's loads of different badges and learning bundles you can look at. Um, and we actually have offerings, uh, which is the next one, called Skills Built for Students, um, which is something that is completely open to everyone. You don't even have to be an IBM to do that. And it looks so, so good on an application as well to, to have done this learning and it links to things like um, IBM design thinking, um, IBM design, uh, agile practices, things that we actually use on a day-to-day -day basis. Having that knowledge um, before you even come to apply to one of our schemes and, and putting it on your application form um, speaks volumes that you've done your preparation and you, you, you've kind of shown that interest in you'd rather IBM as a company than anyone else. So definitely if there's one thing to take away, skills build is a great way to prepare um, for a career at IBM. So if we move to the next slide as well, I'm going to talk a little bit about the fun things that we actually use on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, this is the first time I've actually used this platform for a webinar, but we use WebEx quite a lot. Um, and we use that for any internal meetings, that sort of thing. Just um, even if we're not at the same location as someone, we can jump on a WebEx, discuss, collaborate. Um, it's a great, great tool that we use. The same with Slack as well. So some of you may be familiar with Slack. It's a bit like, I, I mean, I might be showing my age here, but we used to have a MSN when we were a kid, you know, and you used to add all your friends and stuff on there. Slack's very much the same. You have um, workspaces which you can talk to people and, and Slack them and share files, share communications, that sort of thing. So really good collaborative tool. Uh, Mural as well. Mural might be something that you've not heard of, but that's not, that's not a worry. Um, like you say, it's, it's, it's something I don't use as person, uh, personally in my role. Um, but it's a great way, which is like a like a virtual cork board um, and you can invite people and it's a great way to, to write down ideas, discuss things, um, especially if you're trying to maybe like design something new and you want to collaborate with those different people and then keep it on a specific board. That's really good for that. Um, we use Box as well, which is basically like Google Drive. So it's our way of like sharing files, um, having people come and uh, collaborate and add things to certain files as well. Um, and Trello as well. Trello is a personal favorite of mine because I am someone who has to write something down. Otherwise, I will forget it. Um, and it's basically like a, a project management kind of tool. So you can have loads of different things um, that you want to start. You can move them along into different stages to say, OK, this week I'm going to work on this. Um, and then once they're finished, you put them in a nice done, done list and uh, kind of looks kind of satisfying to see how many things you've accomplished in a week. So just some of the little things that we use as tools. Um, great if you use them, not, not a problem if you don't. Um, there's plenty of opportunity to learn about them as well. Uh, if we just then move to the next slide, one of the big things that we talk about in, in IBM is all about being inclusive. So that is, you, don't, you can bring your whole self to work. Um, we do not discriminate in any sort of way. And rightly so, we actually embrace the different um, diverse talent that we've got um, through many different programs as well. So um, it was actually in 1953 that our president at the time, so his name was Thomas J. Watson, um, kind of where IBM Watson came from, um, established a policy of hiring people without regard to race, color or creed. Um, and we were actually the first US corporation to issue, issue such a mandate as well. Um, and obviously that was in 1953. And so we don't rely on that. We actually do things now um, in today's modern world, which kind of helps relay that message about being diverse and inclusive. Um, so, for example, we have a, an Embrace uh, kind of campaign, which was launched in 2020. Um, and it was a global initiative to directly confront racism um, in response to some of the heartbreaking events that happened in the US in that year. Um, to name a few, you know, George Floyd, uh, Breonna Taylor, that's um, the, just to name a few. So it includes a range of social injustice efforts that we're trying to tackle as a company. Um, and it kind of shows that kind of side of, you know, we have that, what we do for our clients, but what can we do also to, to make the world a better place as well? That's kind of the messages that we try and, and incorporate in our work. Um, another one is a Be Equal campaign, which was launched in 2019 to expand, enable, and ensure uh, equality for everyone through learning resources and company-wide pledge for IBMers uh, to commit to allyship and equal representation in the workplace. Um, it's, it's significantly bolstered uh, in employee education programs um, and advocacy for diverse communities by addressing um, topics such as sexism, racism, bias, uh, allyship, um, and including inclusivity in the workplace as well. 
we've got loads of different learning uh, bundles as well with that on our year, your learning page so it's the ways in which you could be an ambassador for, for different groups uh, and take the pledge that you um, you would you would what's the word i'm looking for you would take the pledge that you would actively be an ally in the workplace and if you see any sort of wrongdoing you would stand up and you know address them there and then sort of thing uh, we also have BRGs, which are, they stand for business resource groups, um, which are company sponsored organizations, which align to IBM's business objectives and strate strategic DNI priorities as well. Um, so for example, in the UK, we have a number of um, BRGs tailored to different groups. So we have, so for example, um, Black Women in Tech, we have a BRG group who gets, who puts on loads of events to kind of recognize um, the work that they're doing there in that space and how people can just easily join. Um, it's all but through volunteers as well outside of their day jobs, but it's, they put on some great, great, great activities to create awareness um, and, and just kind of leads to this inclusive IBM um, strategy that we have. Um, so those, those are the main ones that we have in terms of the inclusive at IBM. We also include a lot of the um, uh, a lot of good tech as well to call companies to help them do the same sort of thing. So again, um, with these are all the things that we're doing inside of IBM. We also offer these sort of initiatives to clients as well so that they can implement the same sort of strategies and follow the same sort of messages as well. So lots of stuff that we do for ourselves and for our clients at the same time. Okay, so if we move to the, to the next slide, this is individuality, which is the other third pillar um, as well. It's again, they all link to one another, but we we want you to bring yourselves to the work and we want to bring your whole selves to work as well. Um, so as mentioned, um, diversity inclusion is a massive priority at IBM. But when we talk about diversity, it's all about valuing diversity as well. Um, valuing the unique skills, experience, all that everyone brings to, to IBM um, in the workplace. Um, and career changes as well, internal mobility. So. If there's if there's not a good fit for you and you and you make it very clear, you know, you're not enjoying the opportunity that you've got, we won't let you struggle. You know, we, we will actively help you try and find the career, the career opportunity that works best for you. Um, it's all about finding that good fit here, um, whether that be for the business and for yourselves. Um, we do everything we can to kind of support that. OK, um, I'll if go go to the next slide. I'll talk a little bit about the different opportunities that you have as well if you work with IBM. So life at IBM can be your day job and then it can be anything else that you want it to be alongside that. Um, so besides the meaningful work and career opportunities, here's some of the programs and resources that life at IBM has to offer and support your individual needs and ambitions. So we've got IBM Service Corps, uh, which combines leadership development with the opportunity for IBMers to work with colleagues on projects that have a positive social impact around the world. So you would necessarily be given, um, it's kind of like a, a project brief, right? And you, it's a, it's a global problem, not necessarily to do with business. It's, it could be to do with anything. Um, and you would work with people around the world who are also on the same program to kind of bring those diverse backgrounds together to try and fix a, a real world problem, um, which is, I know one of my colleagues did it, I think maybe a couple of years ago. Um, and he said it was so, it was so eye opening. Um, just being able to take your head away from business and put it into real world problems. And the fact that we actually have a program which does this um, kind of just speaks like volumes that we're not just all about making money. It's we're all about making money, of course, because we are a business, but also making a real impact, I think, is also really important. Learning and network events. We hold uh, annual think conference um, every year and we've actually changed in the last couple of years where it used to be for our clients. Um, who would come down to, I think, our big office in London and we would do massive events, conferences. But we actually open it to every IBM now as well. So you can sign up for the different talks. We do it online and in person. So yeah, everyone has the same sort of level of accessibility as well. Uh, volunteer opportunities. We've got a huge community on different volunteer, volunteer communities, and that can be with your local community, um, where you dedicate your time and talent to, cause, to causes that are most important to you. Um, we have recognition programs as well. Um, so the IBM Global Recognition Framework offers a variety of ways to recognize IBMers across all roles and geographies. Um, and it can be it can be as simply as sending someone a nice little thank you card for helping you. Um, but we actually have changed uh, this program recently to incorporate these things called blue points. 
um, which are quite cool. So originally back in, uh, before, I, before I was a, um, a graduate, um, it would only be managers who got these blue points and you could basically award them to people to say thank you for things, um, for doing a good job. And these blue points equate to kind of like, not prizes, but also maybe showing my age, like an Argos catalogue. You know, when you're at Christmas time, you kind of circle the different things in the Argos catalogue. Um, you can actually go in there and spend some of the points that you've been awarded from your manager. Um, but now we've actually changed it where every IBMer gets an allocation of these blue points each year and you can recognize other IBMers. So you don't even have to be a manager. Um, for example, I got a colleague who helped us out with a lot of work um, last year and I had to, I said, I got some blue points. I'd love you to have them as a way of me saying thank you. So it's a great way of, you know, creating that kind of culture of wanting to help out and, you know, being rewarded for that as well. Um, wellness and mental health resources. So we understand the importance as a, as a company of taking care of your individual well-being. Um, and we have a resilience toolkit, which is also a great resource for IBM and, and can be found on the Your Learning platform that I mentioned earlier. Um, and there are also loads of local employee wellness and mindful groups as well that support IBM as to stay, to stay uh, have a healthy balance um, in their work and, and life um, regimes. Okay, so I've spoken a lot about IBM. If we move to the next slide, I'll start to go through some of the university and graduate opportunities that we have uh, as well. So you can find all of these opportunities on our website at ibm.com forward slash jobs forward slash UK. Um, we've got graduate service associate, uh, graduate services associates program, which is all about IBM consulting. Uh, we've got the software labs, which is my uh, area that I look after. So, I, you know, strongly recommend you to look at those. Some great opportunities there. Um, they're all based in IBM Hersey, which is just south of Winchester. And we have university placement roles as well, which last 12 months um, across multiple different areas. And then we also have the Extreme Blue Summer Internship, which is a 12 week internship. Again, I look after that myself as well. Um, so if we move on to the next slide, um, I'll talk to you a little bit about the university placement scheme. So it's a one year scheme. Starting salary is £18,500 a year or £19,500 um, for central London, as well as a nice little £1,000 sign on bonus, which you get uh, when you join the business. Um, you have to stay with us for three months, otherwise we, we take it back. But um, it's a nice little add on for the first paycheck, I think, which is quite hard because, you know, you would have moved to a new area. Um, funds would have been quite low. So it's a nice little way to kind of help you get started as well. So if we move on to the next slide. I'll then talk to you um, about the different areas. So we have roles in business, HR, marketing, technology, software development, and design. Um, so it, it tailors to all. If you have a particular interest, we're more than likely to push you for that. But again, you don't need any experience. Um, the best thing is if you have a real interest in, um, say, for example, marketing, and you've shown that you, you, know, you want to learn more about it, you've done all these different learning things to kind of prepare you for this role. Um, as long as you show that kind of eagerness to learn, there's nothing really stopping you from applying and securing a role with us. Um, we'll give you the opportunities to learn further on the 12 months, but don't let that experience stop you from applying. Okay, so if we move to the next slide as well, I'll talk to you a little bit about openings as well. So um, what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to grab um, some information and post it in the chat for you. Um, it's to do with whenever our, our applications are going to be opening. So they open at different times in the year, um, mainly because we try and focus solely on getting you through this process as soon as possible, because um, we appreciate it can be quite long. But we try to aim for about four weeks from the moment you apply um, all the way up into finishing an exploration session, um, which then at that point you could be offered a, a matching interview and offered a role after that. So we, we kind of tailored the different uh, groups into into different sprints as we call them um, so I posted the dates of most of our opportunities um, in the chat in the chat um, but the best way again for you to, to kind of get up to date with when they most open is if you go to our website and register your interest for the for the particular role that interests you um, what I will say is as well make sure you you are aware of which one you definitely want to apply to because we only allow you to apply to one at a time so Unfortunately, well, you can't apply for the business, HR, marketing, and technology ones. You can only choose one, um, and then we'll progress you through accordingly. Okay. 
so if we move to the next slide, I'll also just do a little um, a plug about our Extreme Blue program. So we are actually accepting applications for Extreme Blue right now. Um, so you can you can go to our website, you can find the Extreme Blue postings there. Um, and we are have, trying to find roles for 12 technical uh, roles as well as four design roles. Um, it is a 12 week internship, but you are paid the equivalent of 18,500 a year, but pro rata for those 12 weeks. Um, we do ask that you are in your penultimate year um, of university because we can only take undergraduates um, as well. Um, and you are actually part of the scheme given free housing accommodation near the Hursley area as well. We have a partnership with um, Winchester Uni and they actually allow us to have um, accommodation there. So you won't even have to worry about paying for that. It's all free and part of the scheme. OK, um, applications for this uh, do close this Sunday at midnight. So. They're not open for long, so if you are interested, you know, feel free to send us an application, um, and we will take you. We'll, we'll consider you for the role. I'd like to move to the next slide. Um, I talked a little, quite a bit about university placement, but we've also got graduate schemes as well. Um, so we offer graduate schemes in consulting, design, software development, and technology. Um, so as part of your your internship, when you're coming towards the end, we we ask you if you would like to, you know, be part of an intern to grad program. Um, which is basically where, again, you fill out an application form of what kind of areas you're most interested in. And we try and match you up to some of the grad roles that we already have available before we even advertise to external candidates. So definitely something to, to consider as well as a, a further career uh, step as well. We've also won uh, Graduate Employer of the Year for 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. And we have actually won it for a fifth year in a row in 2022. So. Um, another another reason why applying for IBM would be a, a good step in your career as well. Okay, um, I appreciate we're conscious on time. So if we skip to the next slide, um, these are some of the capabilities that we work for and maybe worth taking a screenshot of these, um, trying to include some of them in your application form will make you really stand out. It's some of the different things that we look for at applications um, at our kind of exploration sessions which we do, which are also is another term for assessment centre. Um, it's just our way of uh, assessing you um, as part of our recruitment process. But yeah, being able to include examples of where you've demonstrated these different competencies is a, is a really good starting point. Um, if we go to the next slide, I appreciate, uh, I'm almost finished, I promise I'll stop talking in a minute. Um, but one of the biggest points we can say is, well, I just be you. We we have assessors who have been doing this for a long, long time, and they can tell when someone's not being genuine or um, is trying to kind of blag their way through. So be yourself. We just want to see the real you um, and see as much of you as possible because we can only assess what we see as well. OK. Um, if we move to the next slide, is just showing you an overview of what that kind of application process uh, looks like. So, um, for example, take our Extreme, extreme Blue uh, applicants so far. So they've just applied because we opened on Monday. Um, you'll go through uh, an online assessment, which this year will just be an application form. So no tests or anything like that, just an application form for you to complete. It'll be reviewed by one of our managers who are helping support the recruitment for that role. And then if successful that, you'll be invited to an exploration session, which will be um, virtual for a lot of our schemes, unless you are applying for software development, um, which we're going to get you on site for. So you'll be invited down to our Hursley um, office um, and we'll do some group activities, some interviews, show you around the campus um, and that'll, that'll form a day event. Um, and then if successful, we'll then put you into this thing called a matching pool where business managers can um, approach you and ask you to be interviewed for their role. Um, and then the all important offer after that. So we're trying to cut down on the time in which we, we take going through those, but hopefully we can do it to in between four and six weeks. OK, and then lastly, if we move to the next slide, it's just a way for you all to stay connected with us as well. So we've got our different social links there. Um, if anybody wants to, to reach out to us, we're more than happy to ask questions. Um, our YouTube channel has got a lot of uh, videos as well, which is really engaging. And you can look at a little bit about what people say about IBM as IBMers. Um, and then importantly as well, the skills build, you know, links to your badges, a really good way of, of starting your career with us before you even apply. OK, and with that, I'm going to take a pause and stop talking because you're probably bored to death with my voice. And I'm going to pass <laughs> over to Ryan, who is our intern this year, uh, and he's going to talk a little bit about his journey so far. So over to you, Ryan. Yeah, so hi, everyone. I'm Ryan. I'm 
currently a talent acquisition coordinator at IBM. So I work underneath uh, Liam. Liam's my boss, so I will behave myself today. Uh, so essentially going through the process, I just thought I'd show you my whole career journey, how I got into IBM and what my role is at IBM. So I was just going to start working at school. So at my secondary school, I was at Marlborough College. Uh, my GCSEs weren't great, but I managed to get into A-levels and get three sort of A-levels in business, history and geography. And that allowed me to go into Loughborough University. So before I went into Loughborough University, I started working. I had a gap year and I started working at school. Uh, and kind of developing skills there and found I absolutely love teaching. It's brilliant. Uh, I really enjoy developing students and it's the starting, starting gun for essentially me looking into working at HR. Uh, once I got into Loughborough University, obviously I studied international business, uh, which is a great course. It's a four year course with a sandwich year. So that's why I'm here on my placement year. Uh, one thing that I did do before I started applying for IBM is I looked at my CV and realized I haven't got great experience. I haven't got something that really makes me stand out in my CV form. So I looked and went out and found something. So there's a program called Anaptis. I'm sure there's some university students here. They might uh, know what Anaptis is. Uh, it's essentially creating a social enterprise project. It's creating a business and giving back into the community. It's a competition for certain certain social enterprises to do better than others and there's a big prize at the end of it uh, so me and a couple of my mates set up one called unity so what unity does was teach um give technology lessons to the elderly so we would go across to um not so much care homes but kind of um trying to think of the word here uh, so kind of other elderly care programs and go in there and create classes and help with them so if you see in the bottom left there uh, that's me helping out uh, Tony, who is one of the elderly persons there. And actually during that photo, it's the first time he's managed to FaceTime his grandchildren. So that was a really nice moment there. Um, in that role in Unity, I was the HR lead. So that's kind of the basis of starting my HR journey. I helped train uh, volunteers to help with lessons. I created a whole program about what we teach the elderly about. And I just found that I absolutely love HR. I love those programs about it and I wanted to learn more about it. So when it came to applying for IBM, um, the process is very quick. It's very easy to go through. I'd hope so, because uh, that's part of our role here. Um, so essentially, once you put in your CV and your application form, you'll be sent back an application form to fill in, just to go through what you need and to make sure everyone's on an equal standing. So this is kind of questions for every candidate. So they're all on equal standing. Uh, once you send those back in, I was very lucky to be invited to an exploration session. So what an exploration session is, as you probably might know, it's an assessment centre, is that you kind of go in, you have an interview, you have a group task, and it's just showing yourself off to the business and making sure that they want to hire you. Uh, within a week of my exploration session, I was, grand, I was told that I passed my exploration session, which is brilliant news. Uh, and then from there, you go into matching. So what matching is, essentially, is you, uh, you are... Imagine you're in a big fishbowl with lots of other candidates and it allows other managers to go in there and see, do I want to hire you for this or do I want to hire you for that? Uh, so my matching interview was actually with Liam's predecessor, uh, Lauren, which is a very fun interview. Um, we just talked about Dodds for a bit, which is great fun. Um, <laughs> um, and it's just to make sure they get to know me and know that I'm right for this role. Uh, within seven days of my matching interview, I managed to be get my job offer that was about December 20, 2021 yeah December 2021 so I'm just getting my years right um and then from there I started my role in July so in my role as talent acquisition coordinator I'm essentially helping candidates through the beginning of their process in early professional hiring so that would be graduates interns at Stream Blue program and futures as Liam's already said uh so what happens there is People may apply to the role and I will take their application forms and see if they match the criteria and then push them through to hiring managers to see if the, can, if the form is OK. Uh, and then I'll get you invited to an exploration session, uh, which is where the second main part of my role is, is to kind of create and prepare everything ready for the exploration sessions. So kind of just to give you a, a good idea of what that is, that's kind of inviting assessors to the day. That's kind of sorting out catering for the day, making sure all the candidates are ready, all their forms are ready for the day. And then the actual running of the day, making sure everyone's in the right place, making sure the assessor's in the right room, not over in the building, and so on and so forth. Um, but 
just talk about IBM very quickly. And one thing I've really enjoyed since I've been here is that it is a lot more than a business in my eye. So kind of what I mean by that is that there's lots of different opportunities. Obviously, Liam's mentioned your learning and stuff like that. On the other side of that, especially for early professionals, there is kind of communities and there's give back. So what communities is, is it is all run within foundation, which is the early professionals, graduates, interns and um, futures. And essentially, there are lots of different areas that you can get involved with and have fun in. So, for example, I'm in the sports committee. Uh, what that means is that uh, there's, uh, there's a sports chair, who's actually one of my good mates from IBM, and they kind of put on sports events for everyone to come along to. I know last weekend there was a big rounders event that lots about 30, 40 interns all came down for. That was in Hyde Park, and I heard it was a great day. Uh, another one was there was a rugby match at Harlequins that everyone went to watch, and I heard that's a great day as well. But that's essentially why I've enjoyed IBM so much, is because it's not just business. They do so much more to kind of develop you in your role, especially as an early professional. And there's lots of things, other, other sides to it that you can get involved in. Um, so, yeah, that's essentially it. That's, that's my career journey and how I got into IBM and what I've enjoyed most about IBM. So back to you, Liam. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Ryan. That was a really nice uh, per personal and authentic coverage of, of your journey. So I, no, I really appreciate that. And I hope everyone as well um, appreciates it. And if you do have any questions for Ryan specifically you know, about his experience, feel free to, to send them in the chat. Um, and we'll, we'll address them for you. So, um, yeah, we've covered everything that we want to cover. Um, so it's now your opportunity to ask any questions. You know, um, we'll try and get through them as much as possible. I appreciate it. we've got about 19 minutes until the end, uh, to the top of the hour. So we'll try and, and, and answer them um, all if we can. Um, yeah, we've had quite a few come in. Um, <laughs> so if I, I'm guessing if we'll just go through them one by one, I think we've got plenty of time to get through quite a lot um so to start with um alexis has asked would the roles be remote or in the office or a bit of both oh good question um so this this is something which has changed because of obviously things like covid and stuff we've had to change the way in which we run a lot of our internships but at this this year that we'll be applying for they will be based in the office um most of the time okay so what I mean by that is the expectation is that you will be in the office um, and let, that you'll be based in a certain location. But that doesn't say that we don't allow you to, to work and, and work from home and things like that. That's still very much possible with the tools that we've got. It's just that the way in which our, our placements work is that you get the most out of it by being on site, um, being able to socialize with people, seeing them in the office. Um, you don't quite get that at home. But for say, for example, if you, we have flexible working. So if, say, for example, I need to go home and I've got a puppy at the moment. So usually I'm doing half days because I've got to go to him because he can't uh, hold his bladder for the whole day. So I have to go back <laughs> and get him out. Um, but they cater for that. Do you know what I mean? I come in the office in the morning to do that networking side at the start of my day, gets me ready. Um, and then I, I need, if I need to, I can go back home as well. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Um, yeah, just so just very quickly to add on that, it's just kind of in my experience as well. Is it's very, it's obviously very flexible as Liam adds. In my kind of work week, I will go into the office Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, and get most of the kind of networking and communication stuff that I need to do. And then Thursday, Friday, as long as I don't have any meetings or anything I need to be in the office for, I will normally take it home and just and work at home from there. So it's very flexible, and IBM gives you lots of opportunities to go on that. Perfect, thank you. Um, Charlotte has asked, what type of projects are your interns working on at the moment? Oh, this is, it's a good question. Um, and I think if, to, to put it bluntly, I don't know. Uh, and the reason <laughs> why I don't know is because we have so many uh, interns. So I think last year we had something like approvals for about 130, 140 different interns. So being able to tell you what exactly they're working on um, would be a bit tricky. But what I can say is um, we do have a partnership with Wimbledon Tennis. So if any of you are big tennis fans, we actually support them during the championships and we have a cohort of interns who actually are part of that. So if you are on a university placement scheme, you get asked, you know, would you like to apply for Wimbledon? Um, and we take maybe 20 to 30 interns as a project and you will there be there talking to clients, being in the client sense, talking about our different technologies that we use at the event. Um, 
being able to go around the, the site as well and, and help at those of different stores, talking to people who are there on the day about IBM. Um, so that's one of the big, big projects that we, we offer to people on our intent scheme, um, which is a really good one to, to put your hand up for. Um, if, if it comes, if it comes to you. So I, I can tell you that much, um, which is, is something that is quite exciting if you do get onto our scheme. Awesome. Yeah, you've, got be, you've got to be very lucky to get on the Wimbledon programme. It's a big fingers crossed. It's yeah. 20 out of 130. So I'm, I'm hoping and praying that I managed to get on that one. <laughs> so. Awesome. Um, Joshua has asked, what skills or characteristics do you look for in an applicant? Oh, so I would probably say the, the slide that I spoke about, um, let me see if I can go back to it and we can have it on the screen, um, about those different capabilities. So, for example, this one, this is what we look for. Um, you, you probably might have asked that question before we got to this slide, but this this would be it. So these are the different kind of like competencies we look for, application form, um, expiration session as well. So if you can nail some good examples for these, um, you'll, you'll come across as a really good candidate for us. Thank you. Um, so Liam, you spoke about the skills builder earlier, which is open to everyone. Um, but Amani has asked, is there anything they can do to make the application stand out when applying? Any online courses you would recommend? Definitely the skills builder. I think that that if you can speak about that and demonstrate that you've done that learning on your application form. I know, Ryan, I mean, you could speak about your own experience about that, because I think you also did the skills build as part of your application as well, didn't you? Um, no, so I didn't. I'm afraid you're confusing me with Jack as per usual. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I know there's another intern in our team that Liam always seems to call him Ryan and me Jack. Uh, but no, it's all okay. I feel appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> no, so um, I haven't done anything towards skill build. If you're kind of outside of online courses, things to kind of almost boost your application, boost your CV, it's just going out, out and looking at experience. I mean, it's very similar in any kind of job, not just IBM, but making sure that you kind of, if you want to work in HR, say, Try and find something that's there. Try and find a week of work experience, maybe a full summer's internship, and that will help you so much. And that's why I think um, my application got through was that I managed to have that kind of year of unity working as a HR lead that kind of set me apart from other candidates. So. I think it gives you so, a lot to talk about in the, in the interview. So, so, for example, one of the questions we might ask is, why have you applied for this scheme? Um, to which Ryan would have been able to have said, well, I've clearly got an interest for it. I've so, seek these sort of opportunities off my own back um because it really interests me just kind of shows that that eagerness uh, that ryan had to kind of learn learn something new but also not be afraid to try something new as well okay brilliant um poppy has asked if an applicant put that if they were to choose a role and apply for it but you thought they were suited for a different role would you put them forward for that other role it's a good question yeah so we do ask that you apply for one. Um, however, if something does come about and we think not quite sure why they've applied for it, especially when there's a better fit for somewhere else, um, we have um, other, so for example, Ryan's a talent acquisition coordinator. Ryan in his role would spot that through when you apply and would reach out to yourself and just be like, I see you've applied for this one. That's great, thank you very much. We do also have this one, which we think your application might be better suited for. Are you sure you would like to apply for this one, this, that, and the other? It's not a case of if you apply for one, that's it. We can't move you at all. It's just that we ask, you know, we can't put you forward for an exploration session for one um, scheme and then make you go to the same thing for another because they are very similar. Um, we just ask that, you know, at the start, make sure you're kind of applying for the right one for you um, and then we'll progress you forward in that one, if that makes sense. Yeah, thank you. Um, Georgina has asked, are there any opportunities for postgraduates um, interested in finance or tech at IBM? Yeah, so I think the best thing to describe it with our with our graduate opportunities is that you don't have to be fresh out of uni. I think we look at candidates who are like four years out of university. So um, you, by all means, you can apply to those schemes. We do have a, a, a technology group focused one, which is um, not as hardcore as software development, but it's good to have that sort of knowledge and you can apply that sort of knowledge in a role. So that's what our technology roles are for. Um, but ultimately as well, we don't, you know, we don't stop you from applying anything else. We have loads of job adverts open to external candidates and you, they're not part of our graduate or intern schemes, but there's nothing stopping mm -hmm. you from applying for them. 
Um, you can find them all on our careers website and you can search for key terms like, for example, cybersecurity, and it'll show you all the ones uh, in the UK, which we have for that as well. Okay, thank you. Um, Stephanie has asked, does IBM do international internships or international industry placements? Um, not in the UK. So if you applied for one, they would solely be for the UK. Um, I, in the past, we have done it. Um, however, with the whole restrictions around COVID and travel at the moment, um, we don't have them in place at the moment. Um, is what I will say. So purely the ones that we have on offer at the moment would just be solely based in the UK. Okay. And with that, Mohammed, had, Mohammed has asked, for graduate roles, do you sponsor international students? Um, and are there any drawbacks when reviewing the applications when you are an international student? Not at all. Not at all. We always say, you know, if you're an international student and you want to apply, we encourage that. By all means, all we ask is that you make it very clear to us that that is... Um, that is the case that you are an international student and would require sponsorship, um, for example, because it is a cost to the business that they they have to sponsor. But that doesn't stop them from, from sponsoring. I think I had three graduates this year who the business were happy to sponsor for sponsorship. So it's something we do. It's something that I also had to learn as well. I did not know about the sponsorship process and what it entails, but I essentially look after that for my software development role. So um, it is very much possible and we just ask that you make it very clear so that we can advise the business um, before an offer is made, um, just so that they are aware and can go and get that financial approval. Okay, thank you. Um, I think you might have briefly touched on this earlier, but Aminat has asked, are there any age limits to any of the roles? So for university placement, um, not an age limit, but we just require you to be um, attending a university in the UK and um, you need to be in your penultimate year as well. And the reason why we say that is because our schemes are for those who, you know, are, have a, a year out in placement as part of their degree. Because um, unfortunately, if you say for it to apply, but you're graduating in the summer of the following year, that's when you would start the internship. So you would have technically been graduated at that point. Um, mm -hmm. So that's all we ask for that one. Um, but for graduates, no, like you say, you could be coming fresh out of university or you could be graduated for a couple of years, you know, um, we accept applicants for both. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And um, Rahaba has asked, how can they prepare themselves for the online assessment? So, yeah, the online assessment, we don't have one, any this year. Uh, it's just the application form. Um, I think in previous years we used to do like logical tests and stuff, but we found that they weren't a particularly good indicator of um, job performance. So we decided to scrap that um, and we decided to just go with the application form, but design it ourselves so that we know what we want to, to, to gather from yourselves in terms of like our um, client focus. We ask for you to demonstrate a time where you've demonstrated that. Um, and we, we go, we use a lot of our application forms for a lot of the intern to grad hires as well. So they ask for similar things, but um, Obviously, we compare the two and then see how much you've progressed since the time when you applied uh, for the internship. So um, make sure you, you brush up on some of these for your application forms. They will prompt you to, to, to provide examples with that. But then also there is a, a step in there where you could do like a personal statement. Try and make yourself stand out. Tell us a bit about yourself, which um, not a lot of people know, but it grabs our attention because... As you appreciate, we, we get a lot of applicants and managers have to go through a lot of these application forms as well. So being able to stand out from that big pool um, and make them remember you um, is, a, is a great way to do that. Okay, thank you. Um, Simon has asked, is there a chance for us to show our portfolio of work in our applications? Yeah, so I think for a lot of the design ones we look for, we don't, we don't ask for a portfolio. Um, we ask for, for you to demonstrate us some work that you're proud of, particularly. Um, just because we don't want to emphasize that you need a portfolio to apply for our roles, right? So there are plenty of ways you can demonstrate us to us what you kind of do um, and what you're about. So there is definitely opportunity to do that. Um, we usually ask for it um, prior to manager review stage. So that would be our chance to kind of get some work from you, put it front in front of the manager to give them an idea. Um, and then that, at that point, they might say, yeah, I absolutely like the, the sample they've given us. Let's invite them to an interview or an exploration session. And then let's see what else they can they can bring with them. So you have a bit more time to prepare for that. But yeah, we definitely give you the opportunity to, to show that kind of work off to us. Perfect. And um, 
Malavika has asked, does IBM provide virtual internships? So I'm guessing work from home only internships. Yeah, we don't do work from home. Um, we don't do specifically work from home um, as because of what I said earlier about you getting the most out of your internship. Um, but we do have the opportunity for you to work from home. But the ask is that you are on site as much as possible um, just to get the most out of your, your intern year. Okay. Um, and uh, let me see. Uh, Princess has asked, um, can they apply for an internship while they are studying for their undergraduate degree or do they have to wait until they're a graduate? For which scheme, sorry? Uh, they didn't specify scheme, they just said internship. Okay, so yeah, the, the internship you will have to be studying at that point and it has to be part of your um, your degree. Um, I know that some people, I think they are on like a three-year scheme um, and they apply for internships because they they can change it. I think there's at some point that you can say, I want to then do a fourth year because I want this year out. That's absolutely fine. Just please, please, please make sure that when you're completing our applications that you make it very clear that you, are grad you can graduate at a later date because when they come through to say, for example, Ryan, it's one of the checks that he has to do that you're eligible to see, okay, well, are you going to be graduating when we're actually doing the internship? If yes, then you won't be eligible because you need to be an undergraduate. Um, so it's, if you're in that kind of situation and you want to do a placement year, but you're currently under a three year, just say yes anyway, so that we don't, you know, say to you, unfortunately, you're not eligible. Um, but just make that a bit clear. I think there are some places on our application process where you can just type that in and just say, currently on a three year, but we're looking to change if successful to a fourth year. Okay. And, yeah, I've, um, I've had some problem with that this morning. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, <laughs> I thought I'd mention it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, definitely. Okay. Um, and I think on a similar note, um, Harry Leos has asked: Would an application for an industrial placement year be accepted if the individual is finishing the second year of a four-year integrated master's degree? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, I'm trying <laughs> to follow that in my head. Yes, so you would be. <laughs> Finishing your second year, the third Obviously. year, yeah, so the third year, year will be, be, yeah. So if the third year will be your time to do a year placement, and then you go back finish your fourth year as part of an integrated master's, then that is fine. Um, it, you just need to be studying on a bachelor's degree, um, and you have to have this year in industry as part of your placement, because um, we have to do some work with your uni to say, yep you're supposed to be doing a placement this year please fill out this documentation and it needs to be part of your, your university scheme yeah thank you and uh rahaba has asked um do you currently have any school leaver schemes or level six apprenticeships at ibm yes we do yes I, so i didn't cover them specifically today because of it being a, a national intern week um session but yes we do we have lots of them so we have um i think you may have heard ryan mention them uh, a scheme called Futures Scheme, which is very much the same as a university placement scheme. So in 12 months in length for different areas like business, technology, design. Um, but it is for people who are just finishing their A-levels and want a gap year between maybe going to university or maybe not. Um, but we do offer that. And the same as well, we do offer multiple different apprenticeship schemes at varying levels. Um, we will be opening those roles, um, the apprenticeships, sorry, we'll be opening those on National Apprenticeship Week, which will be the 6th of February next year. Um, but all of those opportunities can also be found on our careers website as well. And you can register your interest as well so that you can be notified when they open. Okay, cool. And um, Jessica has asked, how long does the application process take so they can sit down and have some time to give it their full attention? Oh, um, that is a good question, right? Ryan, do you want to take that one? How long did it take you to complete your application form? Do you remember from when you might have received it? I know we do a deadline of two days um, from yeah. when you get receive it to when you need to send it back to us. But some people finish it, you know, depending on how much time they have very quickly. How long does it take? Yeah. So um, I'm pretty sure mine took me about an hour or two hours, three hours, something like that. I mean, it really depends on kind of... Um, how much information you have ready and how much information you want to put into the uh, system. I mean, I've had a candidate 
um, apply for the Stream Blue program who sent me back the application form within the hour. So that's pretty special. But I think it's more it's more about kind of it doesn't matter about the amount of time you put into it as long as you're happy with it and you present yourself as well as you possibly can and showing off your best skills. I think that's all that matters. So I'd probably say two or three hours probably tops. Yeah, you only get one chance though. So uh, once yeah. you send it to us, that's the point at which we take it and yeah. then give it to a manager. So like Ryan said, as long as you're happy with it, um, you have two days anyway. So if you want to make the most of those two days, feel free. But um, yeah, once you send it off, it's then gone. <laughs> okay. And uh, I think we'll make this the final question, considering the time. Um, what would you say is the best part? In, I think this is aimed for Ryan. What's been the best part so far in your journey with IBM? Working with That's me. Interesting. <laughs> 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 I try, I try. Yes, boss. Yes, boss, of course. Um, no. <laughs> no, so I think kind of one thing I have enjoyed the most about IBM is the community. I think kind of there is a big community feel, especially through the kind of communities program where you kind of you have the opportunity to meet with lots of different people um, throughout the intern program. So obviously there's lots of different offices. I work in the Winchester office, there's a Portsmouth office, there's a London office, and I've managed to meet people from the London office, from the Portsmouth office, and kind of go on these events together. I think that's really great. And the other side of it has been my team. I think kind of it's, obviously this is very special to Talent Acquisition, which is our team, but it's quite, uh, there's nine or 10 of us that we're a very close knit group. And I think that speaks for IBM all the way across. I think kind of, I wouldn't say anyone in our team or in other teams are very similar people. But I think the fact is that, that we're all very nice and we're all very kind of curious and outgoing and able to have a chat and talk about stuff if necessary. There's not an issue with me kind of contacting a higher up boss, even above me, and I don't have an issue going to them and thinking, oh, now I've got to be careful because this, everyone's just so nice and kind of uh, e easy to communicate with, I'd say. Okay, thank you so much, Ryan. Um, and that brings us to the end of the session. Thank you to everyone for joining. We hope you've gained some real valuable insights into IBM and all the opportunities that are available to you. And for anyone who is applying to the placements of the internships, good luck. And hopefully, fingers crossed, you'll get your applications in. Um, and uh, anything you guys want to say or add? Just want to say thanks so much for the time. And, you know, it's been great speaking to you this morning. Um, and like I say, best of luck for your applications. We hope to see some of you come in real soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just had to that. I'm uh, looking forward to seeing a few more numbers pop up in the application form for me to get on with some work today. Um, if you do have any more questions or anything like that, um, I am on LinkedIn, same as Liam, it's Ryan Piper. Please connect to me. I'm very happy to answer any questions on there. Um, so